Welcome back to Get Connected. I'm your host, Con Jackson, and it's now time for a little health beat. Dr. Rucker will be joining us live to tell us the difference between an x-ray, a PET scan, an MRI, a CT scan. Heck, I've got myself confused, and it seems like technology is not just changing every decade, but every year, right, doctor? Uh, absolutely. I mean, if we look at some of the newest things out there, the cardiac CT scans, uh, we can now look and see whether you have coronary artery disease and prevent a heart attack, prevent heart failure, um, and literally with a picture that takes only a, a fraction of a single heartbeat to get. Doctor, give us a sense of the progression that we've seen in imaging. So historically, of course, it was x-ray and then maybe ultrasound. Uh, so the two-dimensional, you know, that sort of picture that, you know, everybody has, you know, uh, you know, in their mind. What's happened over the last 20 or 30 years is the computer revolution has allowed us to really generate three-dimensional computer-generated pictures of the body. And as computers have gotten faster, our accuracy has gotten stunningly uh, more precise. So now we can look at body parts the size of a grain of sand and very rapidly. There are a couple of different technologies, you know, sort of physics used. So you've heard of CT scans, you've heard of MRI, maybe PET scans. There are combinations of these scans that are out there. All right, Dr. Rucker, I don't mean to sound too naive, but what's the one we see on TV where people go through the big tube? So there are a couple, there are a couple that, you know, sort of, they have the uh, proverbial donut hole um, where you go through the tube. So those are CT scanners, MRI, and PET scanners are the, are the main ones where you go through the tube. Uh, so th those are the, typically the three that are in the tube. The one that people always worry about are MRI because it takes a good bit longer um, and the technology is advanced now so that the tube, the hole, is much, much larger. So the one or two percent of people who used to get claustrophobic in the very narrow, tight bore ones don't. Um, and the tube is also shorter, so, uh, you know, there's just uh, that sense of confinement is not there anymore. Well, Dr. Rucker, it does sound like they'd be a lot more comfortable going through the machine now. I'm curious, how much schooling do you have to go through to now keep up with all the readings that these systems give you? So everybody after med school does a residency. I've, I've been involved more in the ordering of the image and using them as emergency department doc. If you're a radiologist, that is who reads the images uh, for us. Okay. That would be a, uh, a four-year residency and then typically uh, a year or two of fellowship afterwards. Well, Doctor, I know you have a special partnership and you lend your name out to such few organizations. What is it about Siemens? Well, uh, Siemens is, is a company that's been around for a long time. Um, it was a company that actually provided the very first x-ray tube uh, to, uh, kind of, you know, to William Kerner Drench and back in the 1890s. Uh, so uh, Siemens has been in the imaging business for a long time. In the last two, three decades, of course, this has really become a triumph of computer science and technology to get these breathtaking uh, three-dimensional images. Well, I'm glad the doctor was here to bring some clarity to the imaging area. And uh, it seems like technology is definitely on our side. If you want to learn more Health Beat segments, you can log on to our Get Connected website at contv.com. we got plenty more on the show because we love keeping you in the know.